broken. Hey everybody and welcome back to Send News, the inside gaming podcast where we talk all about video games. I'm Brian, your host. And I'm Zach. I'm not your host. I'm just a guest. I'm Caden. I'm going before Amir. <laughs> and I'm Amir. I'm going after Caden. <laughs> Kind wow, of a spoiler was... in your introduction. <laughs> Silky smooth. <laughs> yeah, I so appreciate that lead up. We have uh, some fairly interesting uh, things to talk about this week. Uh, and the top thing, we, we did a video about this, but it looks like Microsoft has discontinued some of the Xbox One series of consoles. Uh, specifically, they just confirmed to The Verge that they are discontinuing the Xbox One X and the Xbox One S, the digital edition, ahead of the Series X launch. Uh, they are going to keep making the Xbox One S's, like the non-digital, just sort of the standard edition. Um, quote from Microsoft, as we ramp into the future with the Xbox Series X, we're taking the natural step of stopping production on Xbox One X and Xbox One S, all digital edition. Xbox One S will be continue to be manufactured and sold globally. Seems like... A little bit early. I, I know it didn't. Uh, obviously, the Xbox One uh, consoles didn't sell that great, but we're still at least four to five months out before the launch of the Series X. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I feel like they uh, kind of pulled the plug a little early. Not Wii U early, but still pretty early. <laughs> Can I just say I'm really glad that I got my hands on an Xbox Series X Gears 5 edition before all this came to pass? Yeah. I mean, congratulations, brother. Yep, a, thank you, an, Mr. Xbox, Teeth. an Xbox One X, <laughs> not a Series X. <laughs> did I say Series oh, X? You that did. would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was going to say, it's like, you have a Series X already? I'm How coming over. Do none of us yeah. have it. I mean, uh, I mean like, to, to your point about like it being early, I, I feel you, but also I wonder if... Like you have to wonder how much like they have of, of like a stock of them still left to get rid of before the Series X drops. And it's like, at that point, do, like... They're, you have to imagine they have numbers saying that like they can anticipate that like what they have left will get sold through before right. Series X launches right. and then create pot potentially even like create some sort of you know demand for them. Um, I mean, honestly, they, they probably don't even need to produce anymore because I'm sure anybody who would have bought one probably already has one, and uh, I'm sure you can go to your local GameStop or Walmart and pick one up no problem. It's not like people are uh, you know chomping at the bit to get. To get a an Xbox Series at X X S, S X Xbox X. One X One X yeah X. One Series X. X. Yeah. the Series X we're still waiting for that's coming out this holiday yes they're, the, the, they're the, very the titling confusing conventions naming. are confusing me yeah this it is, is see this is again bringing up that whole thing that you mentioned earlier Brian this is like this isn't necessarily what they're doing with the Wii U but they are going to have that Wii U problem of what the hell is this? Because they had the one Xbox One X, the Xbox One S, and now the Xbox Series X. So many people are going to be so confused over all these naming conventions. But it does make sense that they're kind of getting rid of the Xbox One X and the uh, One S all digital editions. It's probably because they're the ones that don't sell as well. And the One S does a decent enough job for your average gamer that... You know, it's it's cheaper. It does the job. Why would I need to have this? You know, the the One X when right. I mean, you know, the bottom, One S does perfect. Bottom line: If they were selling well, they would continue to make them. Mm -hmm. uh, they're they're obviously uh, using their their uh, production capacity to shift over to the new console, the Series X. Uh, it makes sense. Uh, it, it it does feel early to me, but. It was not a great seller. I think it sold less than 50 million. I mean, the Switch has sold more, like 10 million more at this point, and the Switch just came out in 2017. So not the greatest generation for Microsoft, and they're, they're kind of bringing it to an end a, a little bit earlier or definitely winding it down. I I, I, I don't know. I, I think they rebounded, and I think uh, Game Pass and the backward compatibility, and they got on board with crossplay. Uh, I, they just announced also that they're going to bring Project X Cloud uh, and, and Game Pass together in September. So that'll be cool. Project X Cloud, of course, is their streaming service. So I think they're putting themselves in a good position for the next generation. I, they're clearly trying to get that started as soon as possible. And, and maybe they're hoping that uh, if it look, if we just ramp ramp up production of the next gen consoles now, maybe there won't be any shortages and we can just start moving them immediately. 
Yeah, yeah. I think you're. Is, I think you're right on the money with where like they are clearly itching to get the next console generation started, yeah. and it's like like just get that tabula rasa going and fucking get put this whole console generation behind us where it's yeah. like. Yep. Like you said, you know, if it was if it was selling well, they would continue to make it. Like I remember they were making PS2s up until like like a decent way into the PS3 life cycle, despite the fact that the PS3 did kind of make the PS2 redundant as as far as I can remember it was backwards compatible. Maybe, right? But it was it was still in production. Like even like but the yeah, PS4 they kept, and PS3 still in production. But they, yeah, they kept cranking out PS2s and oh, like yeah. selling them alongside oh, yeah. the PS3s yeah. because they were selling so well, especially in the international market. Right. I feel like I feel like what Xbox is doing here is they're deleting their ex's phone number once they start dating the new girl. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> just like, oh, I, don't, I don't need her anymore. Or they're just you replacing know. it with do not answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm finally Scam finally glad. Likely. I'm glad to see that Xbox's marketing strategy is now finally in full parallel sync with Xbox boss Phil Spencer's dating strategy. Oh, <laughs> is Phil on the prowl? He could do. He could do. Dude, good Phil, Phil, yeah, Phil does just fine for himself. I'm sure. Yeah, oh, I'm sure. I, Phil uh, Spence has got that nice, I, uh, nice balcony. <laughs> it's um, uh, yeah, and, and that's a common tactic when you've lost the console generation. But yeah. Keep it going. Push it. Try to push yours out. Be the first one out with the next one. And and they have made a lot of moves to try and uh, uh, bridge this this division pretty easily with with the um, uh, the smart delivery. Basically, the idea of look if you buy it for an Xbox One, if you buy a game, you can update upgrade it for free for the Series X. So yeah, they are clearly trying to just yeah turn the page. Get it started as quickly as possible, uh, and it, 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 I think they, I think this next generation will be much, much better for them. And yeah. if, if like rumors and everything are to be believed, they're gonna just get rid of the Xbox One S soon after the Xbox One X launches anyway, because they're gonna just launch a cheaper console. I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, according to again this Verge article. You know, they have another Xbox codenamed Lockhart that is going to be, you know, the price, you know, the, the perfect price for that entry level anything. It's going to be targeted at 1080p and 1440p gaming. So this is going to be your your average, you know, consumer Xbox right. series. Right. Whatever. It's gonna be they're held together it. by. Uh, it's gonna be held together with Play-Doh and paper clips. And Sony, <laughs> Sony's already done that with the the PS5. They have a an all digital that's a hundred bucks yep. cheaper. You know, or I don't think have they they haven't announced prices. They haven't yet. announced prices. No, yet. But but you got to yeah. imagine it's gonna be cheaper. So I'm positive. I mean, they already have a discless Xbox One. So. Uh, yeah, it, it, that completely makes sense. It's actually going to be called the when it's revealed, it'll be Xbox for kids, and then the k- kids will be in like bubble letters, <laughs> it'll be like rainbow colored bubble letters, look like balloons, and you know, <laughs> Xbox needs a skew that children can be excited about, but still have that slight tinge of disappointment when they open it on Christmas morning, like the oh, it's yeah. like the Xbox arcade. They're like, oh, I got an Xbox, but I also need to buy a memory card and um, or, or you know, like a hard drive or whatever. Games. And it's, <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, it comes with a free month of uh, of Zuma too. <laughs> I think they really need to. They've got that presentation of their exclusives coming up. I think it's a week from uh, uh, Thursday, so it'll be yeah. on the twenty third. That'll mm-hmm. be yeah, yeah, that'll be really big for them because I think if they kill it, if they blow the doors off, if they announce a bunch of cool stuff, I think that's when we can say Microsoft's back because they've been buying up studios. They've they've been getting the exclusive pipeline going i i think this next presentation is going to be huge for them i wish they would have done this first yeah like that that whole presentation they did was just so blandly average that it was just like i'm supposed to be excited for your new console and you've just made me realize that i don't really need it right now so make me want this Yes. And they really should have come out of the gate swinging. I mean, Sony absolutely did as much as people have, you know, there's two sides to that whole argument of a lot of the things that they're they're planning for the launch of the PS5 being very iterative. But I mean, that's pretty standard for console launches anyway. But Microsoft hasn't really captured the attention of, you know, most players at this point. Because they haven't had that, you know, that exclusive draw to it. Uh, right. I want to see what they have. Yeah, I think Sony did fine. I thought they did a good job. I do think there is a little bit of room, though, 
for Microsoft to upstage them a little bit. Totally. Because totally. I, I think they announced some good exclusives, but nothing like, holy shit. And, you know, New Fable, uh, if if Halo Infinite looks good, if, if they have some more surprises, I, I think they've... Sony's left a little bit of room for Microsoft to come in and, and top them. Yeah, yeah Microsoft really, really needs to really like nail drop it those. They really got to <laughs> drop some good exclusives. Yes, like that's. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like this is def this uh, this generation is definitely be the battle of exclusives, and I mean I think honestly, obviously <laughs> Sony has the upper hand when it comes to that. So I don't know if Xbox is gonna have to put out some like really banging new IPs or like. Because I mean, like Halo is fine, you know. If if you're a fan of Halo, if you're a, if you've been a long time fan of Xbox, I'm sure you're a pretty big Halo fan. But how many times can they re-release Halo? You know, yeah. I feel yeah. like they're, they're gonna have to put some some new shit together. Killer Instinct, please, new Killer Instinct, just do that. I'll, yeah, I'll mean, buy like, an Xbox to, to, to drop a new Killer Instinct. Just like to to de to defend like the Xbox side of things for a, a second, though, like uh, in this like giant war of attrition, like g game of chicken that Sony and, and Microsoft have been playing about like pricing and, and reveals and stuff, like. Mm -hmm. I do think that puts Microsoft in a very good position to say like Sony went first. Like we, we know exactly what to expect from them. Like we still have X amount of time joke uh, intended uh, to, to figure <laughs> out like ha exactly how we want to make this presentation of exclusives roll out. And like, I don't know, barring any crazy technical difficulties or something like they have a really amazing opportunity here to like steal headlines for a while. And like, yeah, I do think it's valuable to like, yep. It's like it's like it's like it's just like going second in a in a game of Yu-Gi-Oh. In Duel Monsters, you always want to go <laughs> yes, second. Yes, yes, great reference. Also, never want to go first. Also, with Project X Cloud, I mean, they've got some interesting. They they've got more interesting things in the works yeah. with cloud gaming. So I I think, I I think they've got you know if they have some exclusives, that's that's a lot of reasons to to give their console a shot. On, yep. on that topic too, if they can pull off cloud gaming, if they can pull it off and make it right. accessible to people, this this completely buries Google Stadia, which I mean it yes. doesn't really need any help, but it well, completely the, the, buries the, the, the understanding Stadia. right now is that is that the, if you have Game Pass, it will. I don't I don't know if it's been revealed if there's like a price increase, but Game Pass will now will once that launches include X Cloud, right? Yes. Yeah, that's which what is they amazing. Said. That's insane. Like that's well, and, and, it's I, already I, such a good deal. So. And that's the thing with Stadia. Uh, you know, I've, I've played it. The technology does work. It is cool. Like when it gets go the thing is they don't have games. Well, yeah. yep. Microsoft has a shitload of games. Like they fill the, the, the problem that Stadia has. So yeah, I think it's going to be, I, I think it's going to be a complete game changer. I the think the best part about that whole thing though, is that when you buy game pass and you have all of these things included, it's, you know, it's like, especially if you get game pass ultimate, it's, on your console, on your PC, and if they're including xCloud, then it's going to be on mobile. And you can download the games. Yeah, That's the yeah. one thing that Stadia right. doesn't have. It's like, yes, it's instant, but it's instant only if you have good internet. Right. And by offering this entire, like, hey, it's streaming, but also you have access to it on your console and on your PC, and you can just download the games, that is, you know, that's the hat trick, everybody. That's it. It's it's over. The, the streaming wars are over, and Microsoft has won. Although I, I can't help but wonder if maybe the inclusion of cloud gaming might actually hurt them in the long run. Because if you think about it, a lot of people already have PCs. And like like me, I have a computer. So like why would I buy an Xbox if I could get Game Pass and just play That's the games true. on That's true. Yeah. Why, why do I need your fancy new console? Yeah, yeah. So I feel like it's weird because like I feel like them offering this cool thing almost kind of shoots themselves in the foot. Because it's like people, you know, Sony doesn't do that. I mean, they do sometimes with like Death Stranding and, you know, like, but... You still have to pay for them on your computer, but I don't know. It, it might hurt them in the long run if people just decide. I mean, it's like Microsoft wins, though. Still, like they, whether you elect to put your foot in the PC or the Xbox camp or both, like they're yeah. still winning in that regard. And like That's I think true. you're like, still paying they they want the gamers and their economy. Yeah, they, like I think like they've like Game Pass as it's an amazing service. It's got some issues for sure on the technical side, and like some of, there's a lot of confusion between you know what's available on the the PC Game Pass versus the console one, but like. At, but beyond that, I think they've done an amazing job of offering this service um, that lets you have the freedom to like uh, yeah. essentially enjoy the service between whatever platform is is good for you. Like so, for me, like the, the PC I'm using right now, f f specifically for work purposes, is like not the most amazing thing in the world. So if I have the choice to to play a new game while that's on Game Pass, I will almost always do it on on the console. So it's like 
I don't know if they can if they can just basically continue this cadence that they've set up of of like allowing freedom of choice of how you want to interact with their platform. That to me seems like I, I'd be less worried about them shooting themselves in the foot and them more worried about them like fucking it up with some uh, some like ridiculous technical thing where you know libraries don't sync between the two or, or something. Yeah. I, think I think they're, they're, they're trying, trying to completely... have it both ways right now. Yeah, I think they're trying to yeah they're trying yeah. to sell you a console and. Also, low key, get their cloud streaming service off the ground. That's clearly where they think the future is. That's where everybody does. the 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 hardest challenge is always the the, the challenge that everyone has, putting enough games on it and yeah. data caps. <laughs> well, yeah, true. I, I can't speak to how good uh, Xbox's cloud gaming services because I've never used it. But I know uh, PlayStation Now sucks ass. It sucks. It's, yeah, it's horrible. So it's terrible. So, so XCloud, I, I used uh, I used Stadia for a bit, and I used their beta version. I've used PlayStation Now, and I've also used the beta for XCloud. XCloud works. Like mm. it, it works. Again, this is under the pretenses that you have good internet and no data caps. Right. Plain right. and right. simple. Right. But I think the thing that sets them above and beyond is that. Game Pass started with you download your games. PlayStation Now started with you stream your games, and then they realized how big of a mistake that was, and then added in you download your games. Microsoft For only some flipping, games. yeah, only and it's only some. Yep. Microsoft yeah. is flipping the script entirely, being you can download these games, but also if you have the ability to, you can just stream them and not have to download them. So that's pretty cool. It's a much better cool. it's a much better pitch that way than the other way around or with Google Stadia which is if you don't have uh, un if you don't have unlimited data and you don't have good internet speeds then you can't play our games that came out 7 months or 12 months ago on every other platform ever. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and also I mean, lime green is just a cooler color in general. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not cooler on the temperature scale than blue, right. obviously, but, right. but it's yeah. a more awesome color. It's more radical. I, I, my guess is they just still, but getting back to why they uh, killed off the Xbox One, I'll bet they still have a bunch just mm -hmm. sort of, you know, stacked up. And, and yeah, from they, the especially last they didn't sell. And they thought they were going to sell a lot more. Yeah, and it's, <laughs> it's, it's either keep tripled. that going and have to bury them in a landfill 20 years from now or, or just, <laughs> yeah, stop and let them you know, just naturally sell out. And I, I think they've made it worth it at this point to buy one, especially if you have it with Game Pass. I, I think it's it, it's not a dud of a system where I feel like five years ago, the Xbox One was kind of a dud. Like, oh, it was yeah. kind of like, oh, oh yeah. this, this wasn't really worth it. My giant VHS players of Xbox Ones only just, so they, they prop up my TV because they do not run very well. <laughs> yeah. right. Needed to get an Xbox One X to make games playable for me. And it was just like, I have launch Xbox Ones. I could have upgraded to a One S, but I just decided One X is fine. It's all fine. <laughs> it's, it's a <laughs> solid console now, but that's years <laughs> down the line. Yeah. And uh, uh, meanwhile, I um, we we put this in the uh, the daily also, but but Sony is really ramping up the production of the PS5. They're going up. Uh, they initially had planned to make five to six million units uh, going through March of next year. Now they're planning on ten million by the end of this calendar year. So nice. they're really banking on the fact that. Uh, people are still going to be playing more video games because of quarantine, because of the coronavirus, all that. And and th the thinking is they don't want to get caught like Nintendo did with Switch shortages earlier this year. So they're gonna, just going to try to make as many as possible. And I think that's probably a smart move on their part. Sony has never really made a dud of a console. And I don't, you know, I, so I think it's smart to uh, uh, g guess high when it comes to the PS5. Yeah, which is good because I remember I was working at GameStop on the PS4 and Xbox One came out. Yeah. And I remember they would sell out so quick and then like people would just like, you know, come back, wait for restock and then they were gone. So hopefully this will kind of alleviate that. And I, I feel like right. it'll definitely help with sales because, you know, it's more opportunities to buy them, which is great. And I've gotten busted by saying Sony's never made a dud before. Yes, the handhelds uh -oh, have Vita. left something to be <laughs> Shut desired. Up, Although I like, I like the Vita. I still play mine. But I'm talking about standard Brian, Vita home, squad. I got I got console. three yeah. Vitas. Vita, Vita squad. squad. The, Vita is a, the Vita is great. The Vita it is, is a great. 
awesome it's piece fantastic. of work. It's yeah. fantastic. It is great. It would be greater if they had <laughs> not supported stopped supporting it. it six months after it launched. The thing is, is also like throwing throwing this in there as well. It came off the PlayStation Portable, which not the best. It's like, here's our handheld. We need you to use a camera in a 3D space. You get one analog stick. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I, I liked the PSP as well. I, I mean, it was fine, but it was just like you PSP had this was my childhood in a nutshell. PSP did better than the Vita, didn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, but think- it's one of those things that it didn't ga- uh, gain enough clout. And when you don't do well enough as far as like, you know, word of mouth and everything like that, when you release the sequel, people won't care about it enough. Mm. You know, people might have liked liked the first one, but unless they loved the first one, which is why, you know, people loved the PlayStation 1, and then people really loved the PlayStation 2. And then when the PS3 came out, people still were early adopting it, and then it just tanked afterwards, which is why the PS4, and honestly, which is why going into the PS4 era, you know, people were just like, oh, Xbox has got this lock, stock and barrel. And then they right. came out with after that E3 presentation. Yeah. Right. But then after that E3 presentation, people were just like, well, maybe not. <laughs> the PSP, though, did have a web browser. And this was in the oh, days before the iPhone. A bit, of, a, oh, a bit of an expensive porn machine, <laughs> exactly. but you could make yes. it work. I was just about to say. And yeah. I remember watching uh, G4 TV. And they had a tutorial <laughs> before the PSPs got uh, web browser support. You could actually, uh, there's a gate called yep. Wipeout Pure, and you could yep. <laughs> bypass their like online Hell system yeah. and actually access the web and watch porn. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and, it was like, and it came out, what, 2005? So this was like, two, like that, yeah, yeah. solid two years before the iPhone came out. So mm-hmm. very revolutionary at the time. <laughs> I, rem- I remember I remember loading up the the landing like paywall pages of of porn sites being yes. like being like it's loading down very slowly like from yeah. the top and then it's like all right all right is it gonna be boobs is it gonna be boobs <laughs> no it's a penis <laughs> damn it <laughs> I just and wasted it's so much bandwidth <laughs> now it's frozen um, all right let's move on to uh, this is a, a much worse story the Ubisoft harassment scandal. Um, this this kind of broke uh, last weekend. Uh, well, it's been going on for weeks, but uh, three big time executives stepped down. Uh, Serge Haskowet was the biggest name. Uh, he was chief creative officer, uh, uh, basically like a super high up in the company, reportedly could green light games all by himself. Global head of HR, Cecile Cornet. Giannis Mallet, a managing director of Ubisoft's Canadian studios, where a lot of the harassment allegations came from. Uh, previous, uh, previous to that, uh, a VP, Max, Maxime Balland, left. So those were four. There have also been others. They're, they're, they're not just four people. Not all these people were personally accused of harassment. Sometimes it was just a question of this happened under your watch in your department. You've got to go. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, it, it, But this has been a massive massive scandal for Ubisoft. And then they had their forward presentation on Sunday, did not talk about it at all. They just, you know, speaking of trying to turn the page very quickly, they were uh, quickly trying to talk about anything else other than their employees being harassed. Yeah, what was that statement they made on on Twitter? Yeah, they came out with a statement on Twitter like (laughs) uh, uh, shortly before the presentation, like, yeah, we're we're just not going to talk about it. Yeah, they were just like, well, (laughs) we didn't have time to properly address it. It's just like, make a it, we we live in this industry we we make content fast you can easily get somebody to make a very simple statement of just like we will be addressing these things in the future but today we'd like to you know it's like we'd like to focus on what games we have to offer we hope you you know it's like you'll enjoy what we have to show you but also know that we are making changes within our company to better reflect what is happening in our industry Plain and simple. It would take you 30 to 45 seconds to pop that video at the beginning of the thing. Bing, bang, boom, you're done. It's well, yeah, such if a, they had wanted to, they clearly they didn't. didn't want. No, they're I, hoping. I, feel it's, like, it's, just, I think I they know like most people like, had no idea it was going on. I feel like something like that would probably be better added to the end. Because, I mean, I guess it'd be kind of like weird to address that and then We're talk about sorry. video games. You know, like, and, hey, <laughs> sorry, there's like weird shit happening at this company. But look at Far Cry. Isn't it cool, guys? Like, I feel like that's something you'd want to, like, 
like uh well i don't know it? you gotta uh, come out swinging with that stuff you really do I, yeah. I, think the, just, I think the way to do it would have just been have aisha tyler come out to the middle stage and go thank you for joining our ubisoft presentation uh before we go one more thing to show you <laughs> <laughs> we're so sorry like a i, mi- I miss like aisha lasers. tyler so much <laughs> We're sorry about this whole harassment video. scandal. One more and... thing to show you, a two-hour harassment <laughs> training video. <laughs> it just, it seems a little, oh. it, it seems a little, at, at least to me, it seems a little silly to me that they wouldn't naturally address something like this, given the current situations that we're, we're finding ourselves in more than anything ever. I mean, it's just like, they obviously know that this is a problem. They ob- already made changes. They did. They did before the presentation. It's like, you could say, it's like, we've already been making big strides forward to better our, you know, it's like our, our work environment and then be just like, and we're hoping to do better by our employees as the time, to- as time goes on. And now sure we're going to show you this stuff because it's like, it's like, but keep in mind, everything that we've made here is, you know, before uh, this entire presentation was made before these allegations came out, which is why a lot of some of the wording, like they said the word assault a million times in their presentations. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah, but maybe, maybe the scandal's still going on. Like maybe they don't have their arms around it yet. And you yeah, don't that's know, true. like if, if you don't like, yeah, Blizzard addressed the Blitzchung thing. They didn't do it very well, but they did address <laughs> it. But, but that was sort of one thing. This is like, this involves a lot of people, it's true. a lot of potential victims. There's going to be most certainly lawsuits, you know, uh, uh, so yeah, it's just a major, major scandal. So I, I, I get it why they didn't talk about it because they don't want to, you know, they want to sweep the bad news under the rug. But yeah, it did. It did seem weird to just sort of not have any mention and just here's all our games. No assault, but here's Gustavo Fring. Anyways, <laughs> right. <laughs> You know There's what makes all this better? Giancarlo Esposito. Here you go. should have had him come out and do the apology. And like his, his Gus awesome. voice. <laughs> what a song. That been awesome. There are some shitty people that work here. Uh, and, and, and he pulls and out the box cutter. He just slashes kind of over- the accused's <laughs> neck with the box cutter <laughs> yeah. on stage. <laughs> and it kind of overshadowed, at least, if you knew what was going on, the presentation I thought was good. There were There was some good... I thought the Far Cry 6 trailer, we didn't see gameplay, but... I thought it looked cool. We have a new Assassin's Creed game that looks like an Assassin's Creed game. Uh, Watch Dogs Legion. I mean, there's they had some good stuff in there. It was uh, very only, Ubisoft. It was an extremely yeah. Ubisoft presentation yeah. full of here is Ubisoft either it's here like, is a here very is good pre-rendered trailer. trailers. Yeah, pre a lot of pre-rendered trailers. Here's a little bit of gameplay. And then here is a short film that accurately represents the world that you will see in Watch Dog Legion. Right. Yeah. Right. Such a Ubisoft presentation. Right. I just hope Far Cry 6 looks good and plays good. Because <laughs> that, that trailer is really cool. And like, yeah, like Ubisoft is really good at doing this thing where they like show you a really nice looking trailer that probably isn't, uh, probably won't represent the final product. Uh, just in terms of like, I was watching gameplay of Watch Dogs Legion, which looks really fun. It looks really fun, but it also looks very like janky. There's like yeah. some like kind of like clunkiness happening. Like I don't know. It, just, it doesn't it's matter. Still, I mean, it is see. still an early build, so any that gameplay that you that see, so you know, the, there is the potential for a you know twenty gigabyte day one patch that <laughs> fixes everything. <laughs> very likely. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's it, this also comes at a time for Ubisoft when they didn't have a lot of games in uh, 2019. And what was the one that was really bad? Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Mm. That was a disaster. Ooh. That was supposed to be kind of their one IP and their one game that was going to get them through the rest of the year. It did yeah, not what at did they, all. What did they have? The Division 2 and then Breakpoint. That was it, really, yeah, it right? Was, yeah, well, Breakpoint had John Barenthal, and I, I'd put all my eggs in that basket. And uh, that's just a human mistake. That's yeah. that's you know, Ubisoft <laughs> could have never seen that coming. Yeah, yeah, we got to give them the, the the benefit of the doubt there. Yeah, he. Um, uh, I, I think that was another reason why they wanted to keep it focused on the games because they really <laughs> need new games to do well. They don't need to be talking yeah. about. Oh, our managers have been pricks this whole time and like <laughs> allowing all kinds of horrible things to go on. Like this could this could be 
you know, really bad for, I mean, it is really bad, but I'm talking about like, as far as the future of the company. I guess yeah. I just want that good faith effort. Maybe, maybe yeah. it's just me. Yeah. I, I do really want that. It's just like, look, it's still messed up. It is still messed up, but we are working on it. We are actively working on it. You can see by the things that we have done. They don't even need to me mess like say that in their messaging specifically what they've already done or it's things that they've you know changed internally. It's like we are actively working on making our work environment a better place, and right. we appreciate the feedback that we've gotten from both our employees and our community. Boom. Now, please it's enjoy really our easy. games that are all pre-rendered trailers. Now, yes. on with the show. <laughs> Who it wants really is that easy for like games. companies like that. Just show, this is what we're doing to fix it. Here's what we make. Yeah, it's, it should be that easy. Yeah. But, you know. All right, let's, uh, let's talk about uh, more pleasant things. We, we have uh, two uh, pretty big games coming out this week. Ghosts of Tsushima. Let's yes. talk about that one first. The review is pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. Pretty, you know, in the sort of good. good but not great category. Well, Solid I, okay. 83 on Metacritic. I, I mentioned, I, I, don't, I don't know if I made it into the, I don't think I made it into the final cut of the daily, but like I, I mentioned this when we talked about the Ghost of Tsushima reviews. Like people forget that a, a game in the 80s is 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 a very good game. Like yes, every game, like people, right. people get like so up, uh, like the, uh, I think that like the IGN kind of, GameSpot review score has trained people to be like this, so it's not like entirely the if it's not hundred, it's not good. R right? Yeah, it's like, exactly. It's like okay, ninety two. Like, that's this, not a ninety four. Yeah, a a, a nine point two. What the fuck? Like it should at least be a nine point four. Yeah, and yeah, it's like, exactly. Yeah, but like, but like even, and that's something that I and I, I don't say this to like shit on outlets like IGN because I I'll also like I you know I have like friends at IGN that are, say things like hey. You know, reminder, you know, a, a game that's in the sevens is still, it's good. A game that's in the eights is good, great. I forget exactly how they quantify the scale, but, like, people forget that a game being somewhere in that, like, 70 to 80 range is not even making it a bad game. It just means it's not, like, a, like a masterpiece or something, you know? Not everything can be the best game ever. And I, I think that people forget that. It's just, like... There's definitely this, you know, this That's right. weird yep. gray yep. area of, well, 70s in school were a C and C's yeah. were bad. And it's just like, hey, C's yeah, get but, degrees. Yeah, C's get degrees. There you go. It's just like, I'm, I'm sure so many people are just like, eh, whatever. I got a lot of 70s and I turned out just fine. So there you go. <laughs> the games are fine. I, Again, that, is a, that is a good point, though. There's always this kind of recency bias of whatever's out right now has to be the best ever. Mm -hmm. It has to be the biggest and whatever. And yeah, it can just be a fine game. And, and this seems like a fine samurai game of which we don't have too many of. So it's yeah. fine. Yeah, it's not as good as the Seven Samurai or something. It's also a video game. <laughs> Game. It doesn't need to be. Yeah, I feel like, it's, I feel it's like not as good as, as the as Seven whole. Samurai, a movie. <laughs> right. I feel like reviews as a whole are just kind of like subjective anyway, right? Like, totally. you know, yeah. obviously, like The Last of Us 2, you know, some people hated it, some people loved it. It's just, you know, it's really up to your own perspective. I mean, a review is a perspective. You yeah. read a couple of them and then you glance, you know, you glance at them and be like, okay, what these people have said, I take with, you know, a grain of salt. And, but what they've said has interested me enough to explore it on my own. And then exactly. I try it. And that's, that's right. what a review is. It's not, you know, somebody being just like, you have to love this game because I love this game. Nobody, I don't think anybody really ever intends to say that I, I've, I've seen some reviews in the past long in the before four times where people have just be like if you don't like this game you're an idiot and it's like yeah. well, that's it's just don't don't do that but it's like or if you're you like about, this game i'm going to kill you that's, yeah it's uh, just ridiculous that's the new normal <laughs> but i mean i don't i don't know if y'all like feel me on this but i find that a lot of the time some of my favorite games are those kind of like mid tier, uh, like you know, we don't really have second party games much anymore. But like those, you know, uh, like for instance, you know, um, like shovelware on the Wii. Is that what you're talking about? Like carnival uh, games? Uh, that we're no, 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 no. Just but stuff, stuff that's <laughs> stuff that's not like <laughs> that's not like landmark. You know, like like Minecraft Dungeons, for instance, is one that came out mm. recently. I can think of it's not it's not like a, a flagship game. But it's it's like 
uh, you know, it's it's really fun. Like it's I've enjoyed game. playing it. It's That's really solid. Fun. Yeah, and and it's like I, I like I I find that those are some of my favorite games. I think of like uh, Gravity Rush. You know, like that game. Oh, that game. I fucking love that game. But like, that's not <laughs> that's winning awards game. for like. Yeah, and, or, Zach, or, I knew we were friends for a reason. I Gravity know. Rush is so uh, good. Or or like or like Dragon Quest Builders Two, an objectively dog shit game from an objectively <laughs> dog shit series. But I. I'm Whoa, <laughs> come on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I'm kidding. I have no horse in this race. You. I'm kidding. I do. I but I'm, that is the the final example I give is like Dragon Quest Builders Two is not a perfect game, but I goddamn if I didn't put like. 150 hours into that thing and just it's, enjoy it's every fun, moment of it. Addicting yeah. and it's it's one of those games that's like, yeah, it definitely is a game that it's like I probably firmly placed it in the 70s with Dragon Quest Builders 2. Easily throw it in the 70s. I put a hundred and something hours into that game. I don't regret it in the least. I had a blast with it. But is it perfect? No, there's frame rate issues, there's you know, clunky controls, but it's not enough to make it not fun. It's an enjoyable experience. And I think that that's where people kind of get like weird about it. And the fact that, I mean, Ghost of Tsushima, brand new IP, 83 score on Metacritic. This is, you know, this could be a new, you know, series for them with a score like that. This is like, where's, you know, it's like, I mean, with like so uh, many hundred, like there's so many hundreds, out of, you know, it's like hundred out of a hundred on Metacritic that I'm seeing here. And it's just like, and there's enough momentum there that makes me think that it's just like, this is serious potential. Yeah. Totally. Uh, do, do me a favor, though, and please stop pronouncing it so incorrectly. It's pronounced Tsushima. So, so Tsushima. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Uh, go, so Tsushima. <laughs> um, all right. Now, moving on, uh, the other big release, Paper Mario, the Origami King. Ooh, 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 um, ooh, ooh, ooh. Again, reviews were OK, but this one, they seemed a bit more down on Paper Mario. Uh, there's some some a lot of issues with the combat people had. There was a, a whole uh, interview about and this this speaks to my problem with Paper Mario, <laughs> uh, the Origami King, is that. The team isn't allowed to do what they did before, which made, you know, Paper Mario such a fun series. They're not allowed to, like, you know, give Koopa's hair and different sprites and, you know, hats and personalities. It's a Koopa is a Koopa. A Goomba is a Goomba. The end. The only time you're allowed to add new and in exciting things is it has to be a new character or a new type of character mm. to be added in there, which means that point. all of the fun stuff about paper mario where you're actually getting to know the like you know what i've been i've been stomping on goomba it's like on, on goombas and koopa troopas forever and then paper mario came and it's just like well maybe you should reconsider why you've been doing that because they have families and friends and they live their own lives it's like oh heck maybe i should be thinking about this a little bit more and i got attached to these characters but there's nothing to really do attach you to a lot of the characters since sticker star which is ugh. but i mean origami king looks fun i mean the gameplay mechanics are are, are nice we're somewhat returned to uh a, a normal battle system with this like ring battle whatever that's like puzzle and is it skill turn -based? And it's turn-based yes oh, it's, i've never played a paper mario game so i'm not sure like the so it's not like standard Mario, like just run, no. and jump. Unless on you're fools. talking Super Paper Mario, Super Paper Mario was totally that. But oh, okay. It just feels like the the spirit of what Paper Mario started with, and what everybody, as far as like fans of the franchise, want. That's never coming back because of the way Nintendo is trying to organize the Paper Mario series. So I read something <laughs> today. Uh, I think it was like on Twitter in passing, but it was like since Mario. <clears throat> Excuse me. Since Mario is such like a household name, obviously he has been for years. But since since it's very popular in the mainstream, like people with like with people who don't even play video games know who Mario is. Nintendo is a lot more strict on that IP. So like anytime they do try to branch out, they have to keep it under very much under like a specific uh, it, like a very specific like, you know, like you said, like the Goombas can't be stylized, things like that. Yep. Like they just Let's all keep had to Mario to basics Mario. and put him in a world with rabbits from Rayman. <laughs> right. That sounds right, though. Like <laughs> Disney, Disney's that way with like Mickey Mouse. Like there's limits on what you can do with that. And like yes. I remember so when, when, Kingdom Hearts. They were, when they were making Disney Epic Mickey, that game, initially they were going to sort of make him like all evil and sort of mm. this sort of angry rat. And 
Mickey at Disney was like, absolutely not. <laughs> but this is so weird, though, because they already did it. That's the thing that people liked about this series. That was the fun part is we got to have these adventures in these worlds with, you know, a different spin on them, actually taking a dive into these characters that, you know, have been historically enemies and learning that they have their own personalities and such. There was the stuff that you could latch onto right. and it had a healthy dose of original new and traditional all woven together. And now it's just, you paint by these numbers or we're not making the game. Mm. And it might honestly be time to just stop trying to make Paper Mario because this isn't Paper Mario anymore. This is you just slapping a paper aesthetic on, a, on, on something and calling it a day. It's just Mario, but he's made out of paper. Yes, yeah. it's not I mean, Paper Nintendo, Mario, it's just Mario made out of paper. <laughs> Two different things. I mean, to be fair, though, like, Nintendo didn't have, like, an easily monetizable mobile strategy when Thousand Year Door came out. It's like their their priorities are, are clearly, like, way beyond the horizon right now yeah, when it comes to, like, their IP. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Just give me Thousand Year Door HD. I don't care about anything else. Just give it to me. I feel bad, though. But, yeah, it feels like this could have been more. And, and Nintendo, I feel like, needed another big IP this year because the cupboard's well, pretty bare for the rest of 2020, I think. Keep in well, mind, though, the 81 supposed, score on uh, Metacritic. Add well, 81 score, which means Mario not a bad leaks. game. I don't think I don't it's f- bad. I just don't think they hit it out of the park. No. The 35th anniversary might be happening. Yeah. That'll what be is cool. up with that? Yeah. <laughs> Well, they haven't said anything. So exactly. It looks yeah. It's supposed to be waiting. on the twentieth. If, if the leaks are correct, they might be announcing it on the twentieth. I don't know. Drum if roll, that please. happens, I will be so goddamn happy. Twentieth of this month, you think? Yeah, that, that's what according I saw. to it rumors. Was like July twentieth. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Cool. Which means Monday. Oof. Monday, those, we might have those so remakes. many Mario games. If they just so. make a sunshine sunshine remake, I'll be happy. <gasps> yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm. That's it. That's all. Mm-hmm. I've never played the Galaxy games, so I actually do oh, want them. Oh, oh come on. They're so I good. I know. Both I, I want them so on the Switch good. so I can play them. Like, yeah. I have a Wii, but, like, you know, the, the Wii <laughs> controls are okay. Um, but, like, if they do oh, prepare put for them to be sure just as okay on the Switch. <laughs> it's worth it. Those were, I think, maybe the two best games on the Wii. Yeah. Mm. They were awesome. I do want to play them. Because I think it was, like, they, were in, fantastic. I, they might have been, in, like, in high school at that point. So it's just, like, Kind of like over Mario. I forgot what year they came out. I just, I know I was at like a point where I was like kind of like done with video games for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So I just, I just never got to play them. All right. Let's uh, get to questions. But first, everybody, let's talk about Lumen Skin. Now, I know these are tough times. You're probably cooped up at home. You're busy. Maybe you're just lazy. Maybe you're just splashing water on your face. There's all kinds of reasons you might have to neglect your skin. Uh, me, I'm just lazy about it. I forget. I get out of the shower. I dry off. And then, oh, oh my Brian, face Brian, is... you're beautiful. Come on. No, I look and I see... Yeah, well, yeah, because I use Lumen Skin. That's why. <laughs> Here's the truth, guys. Your skin has needs. If you want it to look as good as possible for as long as possible, you got to address them now. I get it. You might not know where to start, but there's a company that's taken all the guesswork out of it for you. Lumen. Lumen is on a mission to help give men the amazing skin they deserve through high quality, expert created products, and they're delivered right to your door. I use the moisturizing balm. Uh, Like I was saying, I get out of the shower. I used to never moisturize. Huge mistake. It looks like my face is peeling all day if I don't use moisturizer. But specifically, I've used others. Lumen Skins is the best. Uh, Ah, the moisturizer, it just feels so good. And probably because all of their products are formulated specifically for men's skin and made to target skin issues with maximum effect efficacy. Using top-notch ingredients like charcoal, green tea extract, vitamin C, So yeah, if you don't know how to begin, they make it easy to fight the right skin management system for you. Pick from your different skin concerns. I have dry skin, so that's something I have to deal with. But guys, you deserve to look and feel your best. Here's where to start. Go to lumenskin.com slash sendnews to get a one month free trial of everything you need to start your skincare journey at home. That's lumenskin, L-U-M-I-N-S-K-I-N.com slash sendnews, S-E-N-D-N-E-W-S, all one word to get your first month free. Lumenskin.com slash sendnews. Thank you. Lumen skin. All right, Thank let's you, go skin. to the yes, we love you. Uh, let's go to the questions. 
This one, uh, kind of a sad one to start off with from Christian Uh-oh. Summers. I somehow managed to get a switch light before catching coronavirus. Oh, no. Oh, Christian. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I hope, I hope you're, you're doing ju- all right, Christian. I hope you're just yeah. kidding. Uh, but, yeah, hopefully uh, hopefully you're just goofing. If not, I hope you make a recovery very soon. I just finished Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. I need something else to play while I cough my lungs out. Could I get some recommendations? Dragon Quest XI and yes. uh, uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Boom. There you go. If you're, Zero. if you're playing... Oh, Katana Zero is real good. I love yep. Katana Zero. I Very mean, Animal game. Crossing is a good one, too. I mean, oh, yeah. Yeah. everybody's new favorite time waster. Of course. Um, what I would echo all of those. Hollow Knight uh, is very good. Um, mm. Uh, Borderlands 2, I've been replaying the Switch port. <laughs> is good. Um, Mario Maker 2, there's just like a ton of content there. Even if you don't like to make levels, they have pre-made ones that you can play, and then you can also just play community levels. There's a ton of stuff. You can never get tired of Mario Maker 2. No, it's, true. it's, it's uh, unlimited. Uh, Stardew Valley, the Switch port is good. Into the Breach. Uh, I know Into some the of these are older PC ports. Yeah, if you like strategy, Into the Breach. Dark Souls port, if you've never I mean, played Dark Souls, it's pretty good. On we, we joked about it earlier, but Mario plus Rabbids came to battle and it's yeah. Donkey Kong <laughs> DLC. That stuff's so, it, that stuff's so Very good. good. It's It absolutely is so amazing. Oh, Tropical Freeze. Sorry, you said Donkey Kong. And yeah, Donkey Kong Tropical, Tropical Freeze, Freeze for the Switch with the funky mode. Oh, yeah. yeah. To, I haven't tried to, funky mode yet. Funky to keep mode's it fun. With, to keep it within the like kind of wheelhouse that he seems to have like, painted, uh, I think my recommendations would be um, check out Valkyria Chronicles Four. Um, Ooh, so I good. love that series. Yeah, those so those games good. are those games are, are are awesome. And if you're if you're kind of feeling like you want that kind of JRPG anime style of things, yep. but like you maybe you know Xenoblade Chronicles is a, a big uh, uh, honking game. And if you maybe want something that's like same same shtick but a little lighter, Valkyria Chronicles is big four specifically game. is a honking game. Yeah, it's big, it's, uh, it's, <laughs> it's 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 like a really if you're like not familiar with the shtick of that game, it's like it's like a strategy game. But then when in, instead of just like clicking a, a character to move somewhere like you then snap down to the battlefield and take control of the character so it's, it's really cool um i'd say if you're into card games slay the spire it's f- f- fucking amazing Ooh, yeah. on switch yeah. Slay the spire is, is i think the switch port of that is the best way to play that game um and then like i uh, you know from experience like i uh i've been playing through pokemon sword recently because i yeah <laughs> <laughs> finished I finished I finished Last of Us 2 um a while back and I just needed like a, a lighter kind of more colorful like yep. easier game to, to get through as like a palette cleanser and I'm um, glad somebody else said Pokemon and not me because I'm just it's like of course I'm gonna say Pokemon but echoing Valkyria Chronicles uh Fire Emblem Three Houses yeah it's that was tons right. of yeah, pl- replayable I mean once you beat one one story you can go back and just kind of like do it again and there's so many different like you know people to romance and stories to be told with different characters playing different roles and then the dlc is fantastic as well yeah Gotta every hit. different house has a different storyline yep. so your your you three playthroughs are going to be pretty different you uh, can and fuck you know a what after the, after the <laughs> after the dlc ashen wolves or go home i'm sorry it's ashen wolves or go home um also jrpgs if you like those tales of vesperia uh <sighs> definitive editions on switch uh, it's not the best uh, but it's it's still pretty good. I, I like it. Uh, East 8 is like an action RPG, uh, which I thought was very solid. So, yeah, that that should that should get you through COVID. That'll dude. tide you over for a couple thousand hours. And, yeah, and right. also, it should, also, it should be said, like, for real, please take care of yourself, too. Like, it's yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah, I, yeah. I, I'm if you're actually I've gotten, sick. I, I don't I don't mean to, like, go down like a thing here, but my uh, my I've like had a COVID thing happening in my family where both my two younger brothers are positive and one of my grandmas oh, wow. is positive. And it's like, and, and it's like some of the, like my, my grandmother and my youngest brother are not really feeling many symptoms, but my, my middle brother is, is absolutely feeling it. And he's sick as a dog right now. So like first and foremost, like, please get some rest, please take care of yourself. Like, please yep. drink enough water. Just yep. like, let, make sure you're, you're taking care of yourself before anything, you know, yes. sleep is more important than getting through any of these games. Yes. This is also a good time to remind everybody, wear a mask, wash your hands and right. physically distance yourself from people. Stay home if you can. This is a real thing. Seriously take care of yourselves and other people as best as you can this thing and if you have a problem with that meet me at the ross dress for less parking lot in culver (laughs) city off venice boulevard and i will will fucking go with you and i will not show up (laughs) and i will not show up because social distancing (laughs) square up six feet away all right moving on evan Voorhees asks was there ever a point
point where you lost interest in video games. Uh, yeah, I totally oh, remember yeah. like, I feel like junior, senior year of high school, first year of college, I, uh, yeah, I just didn't, uh, I didn't play them as much. And I picked them up later in college, but there was definitely a two or three year period where I just sort of was like, eh, I was doing other things. Fucking girls. I, yeah. <laughs> well, or, or at least the, the possibility, but certainly not a reality. Trying to fuck girls. <laughs> right. I don't think so, honestly. I've been, it's like, I've been on this solid path of, no, nope, games are great. Maybe I'll play less. But I'll, I've never like completely opted out. I've been such a doofus in early adopting every console ever since the PlayStation mm. One era. That is just like I can't not games at any point in time. I'm I, currently I'm I'm not necessarily playing any big games, but that also translates to me being just like I think I'm just gonna play a bunch of mobile games. I even asked last night. This was like, hey, I've been diving into mobile games a lot more lately because of everything that's been going on. They hold my attention better. And I got a ton of responses from a ton of people in the community. And I'm just like, yeah, you know what? I'm downloading every single game that people listed. And so Grindstone, even if it's not Grindstone. console. <laughs> I think for me, like there, I mean, there wasn't really ever a time where I like, got completely done with video games. I mean, you know, like I said earlier, there were times where it was like kind of stepping away, but it was more so like due to like my different living situations or, you know, like whatever was going on in my life, I would kind of switch my focus like for my leisure time. It'd be like, oh, I, I'm yeah. going to play some like emulated game and like I'm going to be into like Pokemon for a while. Or it was like, you know, there wasn't, I mean, there was like a time period uh, probably in like my mid to late teens where I was like very much like casual games like, you know, Mortal Kombat or like, you know, just things like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I've never like, just completely like throwing them out the window. I'm done with this life. I'm going to go be a mechanic. I'm going to go uh, watch the game I, with the boys I, and I feel sign like, back some Tecate. <laughs> some Tecate. I feel like, I feel like, the, yeah, I, I totally mirror you on that where I like, never fully went away, but like I always found that like it, in certain transition points in my life, games, like my priorities would shift obviously. So like my right. junior, senior year of high school or like my freshman year of, of college or like my junior year of college when I went to study abroad or like um, when I first moved to LA, like I didn't, it took me like a year of being in LA to be like, okay, I'm settled here. Now I'm going to, you know, I want I want to get a PS4 or something. Now but I'm like, going to unpack. Yeah, I, exactly. Yeah. The last box is unpacked and so no, I can't, but like to your, to your point, like I never, like I, I never stopped consuming games, media coverage. Like I, I was always like up on, on reviews oh, and always up on, yeah, yeah. Like I would still read blogs and I would still, you know, be very heavily involved on Twitter's, you know, game sphere. Um, I think that was the name of the console from Drake and Josh, the game sphere. It was, yeah. it was the game, game sphere. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, what was, yeah. What was spherical. The, the, the Kuma, <laughs> Akuma spherical. game sphere. Spherical. <laughs> 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 Jesus Christ. Um, okay. Another question. <laughs> speaking of consoles, where was it? Uh, Moogle Boots asks, with Microsoft and so Sony soon releasing their new consoles and one of them looking like a router and the other one looking like a mini fridge, do you have a preference on how a system looks? I was always a fan of the GameCube. Mm. It was just cute. Uh, yeah. It was cute. I yeah, don't think I, the Xbox looks like a mini fridge. I think no, that's the joke it, is is there, but it looks it's like a full size really. fridge. It looks like <laughs> a full size fridge, but it is mini. <laughs> it looks like a fridge for one beer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one tall. I mean, can. play into their audience, right? Yeah. <laughs> one cool tall. Uh, one of those uh, BFC monster drinks. Um, um, yeah, I guess I like it if they're attractive looking but ultimately I, it to me it doesn't really matter much i mean it just needs to m most of the time now they're just sort of this this black slab that you yeah plug yeah. a bunch of stuff into i think that's for me like it's more about practicality right like how am i going to fit this damn thing in my entertainment center and the way yeah. it's looking now yeah. is i'm not going to be able to fit either of these in my <laughs> entertainment center have you seen how big and how heavy the ps5 is oh yeah it's like it's what, 10 pounds? Specs. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah I saw it was big. like 10 and a half pounds or something like that. And it's like bigger than the Xbox uh, Series X, XS, S, SSX Tricky. Um, I miss the Super Nintendo and the Super Famicom. That was such an aesthetic. Mm. But like, I don't know. I, 
I okay. So the ultimate, like, I feel like the ultimate console was probably the Nintendo 64, completely based on aesthetic because it had those like clear plastic ones mm. with all the different colors and everything That's like that. I, I, have. Like, I don't know if you guys can see it. Oh, my virtual. Bat. I, have a, <laughs> I have a green one. I don't know if you guys can see it. I got Mario Kart in there. It's it was like just, a big deal that added four controller inputs too. That it was really not was. Yeah. standard by any but, means. I don't know. I mean, every every console these days is just like, yeah, that looks like a fucking console, I guess. Yeah, it's, just yeah. Like, it's a box. It looks like it plays games, and I mean, we're leaning towards everything becoming. I mean, essentially, the the PS Five and the Xbox Series X, they're PCs, and they look kind of like exactly what you'd think a right. PC would look like. Right. And it's just They're like, PCs. Yeah. are they appealing to a completely de a different demographic? I mean, I, I mean, I miss like the different varieties of consoles and things looking like, I don't know. I miss well, it looking like a sort of like a toy, the OG I guess. Xbox Two PlayStation's looking like an credit. engine block. Two PlayStation's credit. The PS5, it does look like a router, but it looks cool as hell, in my opinion. I don't they know. Went, I, I they like... went for it. They went for <laughs> yeah. something. They, did. they I don't did. know if it something works, unique. But they it looks for different. It, yeah. like it has were, an aesthetic. It, yes. Exactly. Yeah. If you were to put that on your entertainment center, it would for sure stand out. Like, it, yeah, people would be like, what the like hell a, is that? That's right. It, that's yeah. right. <laughs> that's right. It's like, it actually well, and cool. here's a, here's a related question from Ash. <laughs> what are your thoughts on themed consoles? Like the, oh. uh, they use like the Gears of War 3, Xbox 360 or the Spider-Man PS4. Yay or nay, hmm. worth it or waste of time? I, some of them look cool. I would never like pay extra though for something like yeah. that. It's absolutely super cool, except for when they make really freaking annoying ass sounds when you start them up. Like the Forza <laughs> Xbox One, when you start it up, it makes a car like Hell revving yeah. motor. Oh, and then, no. and then the uh, the what the Xbox uh, Xbox the Gears One Five S. One. Yeah, it just the, t does the chainsaw That's every time. That's the one time. I have. It's insane. You start it up and it does the uh, 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 ring, like the horde sound. It's We're like getting too locust. old. We're getting too old because kids would love that. But like, look, like it's it's totally dependent on what it is. Like this one's. I'm not. I don't think anyone is like fully against themed consoles as long as it looks cool. I mean, like, yeah. I, like I remember the Destiny PS4 was like that awesome Snow White with like the very minimalist design and like that was a cool That's design. That's really nice. The, Spider-Man PS4 is super sleek and clean. The Spider-Man mm -hmm. one is pretty oh, it's cool. so clean. I'm not a huge fan of that one. But the but like the uh, the one that I always think of that stands out to me is like the best one I, I can recall is the um, Halo 360 that was like that, mm. that yeah. kind of forest yeah. green. Oh, That's cool. So, I mean, uh, sticking with newer consoles, the the Switch had one of their first big major ones with Animal Crossing. Yep. Yeah, that and the looks dock so is good. just, it's adorable. And yeah. the pastel controllers, I love it. It's amazing. And also the Wind Waker Wii U. That was oh, pretty cool. Oh, yeah, with the little, the little, yeah. the gold the black on it. one. Yeah. I have that one. I have yeah. that black one. Yeah. Do y'all remember the yeah. Star Wars uh, PSPs? Yes, no. there was like the, the Darth Vader, Vader and the, the there God was like the of red War one. PSPs. That was the red one, right? Yeah. yeah. See, the, now, the I will the, say they <laughs> did come out with a metal slime themed 3DS from Dragon Quest only in <laughs> Japan, though. I absolutely would have bought that. Did you? Did you <laughs> see? It's in a, in a minute. keeping that keeping that theme going. Did you see the uh, the Switch Pro controller? That's the slime from yes. Dragon Quest. Oh hell yeah! <laughs> oh, yeah. I love it. It's completely impractical, but it's amazing. Right. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I don't know. I, I guess there are, I guess we all have our certain, uh, uh weaknesses <laughs> when it comes to that. Give um, me translucent game consoles again. I want them. <laughs> exactly. Um, hundred percent. Number one, the no fan Dylan, ah, Scotch German. We love you. What needs to happen on the 23rd to put Xbox on top this coming generation? So we talked about this a little bit. Yeah. Um, I, I think. Um, I think new fable will be good. I don't know if that by itself will be enough. Cause I don't think a lot of people, I, I some people will remember and love it. I don't know if it'll be that breakthrough game. Um, I, I, I still think they need one more big banjo uh, three big bang. banjo three. <laughs> Give me banjo three. And then I was going like, to say it should, it should probably <laughs> be something from rare. I feel like rare it has to be. I yeah, mean, they got to dig into yeah. the back catalog. New Perfect Dark game. Would oh be awesome. yeah, it's something that completely erases Perfect Dark Zero from everybody's yeah. memories. I'll take right. that. Yeah. <laughs> like I said earlier, New Killer Instinct. If they did that, they yeah. would. With that I mean, would with be Killer fun. Instinct making that resurgence, I mean, like even uh, the most recent Ki was really good. I, I mean, yeah. there was no reason that they should have. 
stopped that, but I mean, you know, yeah, industry. Well, I mean, it's, industry. it's coming back in like the competitive scene, so I feel like they it's should. It's fun. It also has one of the it's most amazing. competent like tutorials in fighting mm -hmm. game history. It's yeah. taught me more than any other fighting game ever. Killer Instinct. Is it was making fantastic. a resurgence? Is it coming back? Yeah, in they, the fighting they, game scene. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they're going back to was it. Uh, Evo? Is that what they're good? Okay. They're coming back to like the competitive scene. I don't know, but they they were coming back in some form. Huh. Well, there you but go. They need a new season or a new game. I, I do buy. think it would be smart of them to yeah mm -hmm. dive into the back catalog because like a new the, IP won't do it. Yeah, the Crash mm -hmm. Remaster, the Spyro Remaster. It, it's shown that there's a lot of love for these old properties. I, I feel like they could do something like that and, and just get people excited. Nostalgia, um, I, baby. Yeah, I don't think they have to do much. I, I think, but, you know, I, I think they're part of the way there. I'm sure we're going to get the Fable announcement. Obviously more Halo. We're going to get a new Forza game. So I, I, I think they're on the right track. I, I feel like they just need one or two big ones. And then, yeah, I think, I think they can just swing it right back in their favor. Hmm. All right, well, let's call it a day. That's uh, That'll do it for Inside Gaming, and uh, we hope you guys have a great week, and we'll see you next week. Yeah. Bye. 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 I understand if you don't think it's racist or you're personally not using it in a racist context, but it's one of those things where you can't put yourself in everyone else's shoes. <laughs> and it, it, just because you might not think it's racist doesn't mean that other people might not think it's racist. Yeah. Yeah. I totally 